Hi everyone, welcome to episode 3 on Recorder Technique and today we're going to talk about... Articulation. Today we will be talking about single tonguing and double tonguing and we will start with the single tonguing. So there you've got T and you've got D, so the T would be And the D would be... So what's the difference? Okay, first of all you have to remember that the tongue is going to be really relaxed within the mouth. And remember also that the jaw has to be really relaxed and shouldn't move while you're playing. So this entire area is relaxed. And then the, only the tip of the tongue is going to work. So imagine this is my entire tongue and this is the tip so it would only be ta, 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 ta. the second thing I should say before we continue is that the air is always going to support the tongue so imagine this is your tongue so the air helps it actually already move and then articulating is going to be much easier Okay, so what's the difference between T and D? The T is going to close off the air, like a gate. And these muscles still have to be active, even though we're not actually blowing. You see, it's active. And on the other hand, there's the do. So normally the do, what it does is, it comes in the middle of the air, but it doesn't really interrupt it completely do, 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 do. you see then there is a dud so a dud does stop it do, do, do. the energy of the tongue is always going to be backwards and not towards the palate because then it's going to make a lot of noise so always think backwards de, 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 and not towards the palate. Apart from T and D, we've also got R and L. So the tongue R is a little bit softer than the D. And the L is even softer. Let's try that out on the recorder. So a T. I've been singing in E flat. Okay, then D. We've got the dud dud dud. It's like a soft T. Then we've got the R. And then we've got the L. You almost don't hear it. It creates a tremolo effect on a, on a long note, the L. So it's a peculiar articulation. On which exact spot does the tongue articulate against the palate? Well, I'm told that it should be just behind the front teeth. I've known people that touch their teeth and it worked well as well, but the rule is not touching the teeth and you have a little bit of space to find out. Of course, when you go too much backwards, it makes no sense. Okay, so again, the tip of the tongue is working, the rest is relaxed. So as I told you before, this always has to be working. You have to imagine the air as the river and the tongue as fish or leaves or a little boat floating on top of it. Just going quickly through staccato, legato and portato or non legato in the middle which is a very broad middle. So legato obviously is just slurring, which is very good for practicing the combination of the fingers. Then staccato is opening the gate very short amount of time and closing it immediately. Still activated with this.
so it's very short. Then in the middle we've got the portato, non legato. So you can imagine one note has this space. Uh, staccato would take only this space. So for portato you've got all this range of um, filling it up or not so much. So you get it quite a lot. Or something in the middle. You see, it doesn't become staccato, but it's a little bit more separated. Great, now we continue to the double articulations. So there we've got three types. The first one would be lere, 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 lere. This is especially easy for Mediterranean or Latin speakers. As you notice, as a Dutch speaker, my lere isn't very regular. My tongue is just not very good at it. Second one, didl. So that's D-I-D-L, didl. I once had a teacher when I was like 12 years old, uh, Michael Barker, an American uh, musician, and he used to tell me that there was a neighborhood in New York that was called Little Italy, Little Italy. This articulation is very useful, but it does need eight weeks of practice. So, patience with it. So what diddle does actually is diddle. I cannot show you that, but diddle, 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 and the diddle makes like diddle, 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 and the third articulation would be everything going from dege until teke. Dege, 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 or teke, 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 teke. The trick here for me is trying to get the ge a little bit forward and not saying it so much within the throat. Again, using that air to make it easier. So that's like the digga digga, and then the ticker will be. So, how do you practice digga digga or ticket ticket? Well, first of all, try to invert it. So, get it, get it. And it should sound exactly the same. And that's especially going to be a little bit more of a challenge in the high notes uh, when the ge comes on a strong beat. It takes the body or the brain some time. But it's very good because it really allows you to become very rhythmical and that's very important. And then I would do it in groups of three. So de ge de ge de ge de ge de ge de ge de for example. You always try to make it flow with the air. So that's a very good exercise because automatically it will be inverted. And you also learn to use it for triplets. And how do we apply all these articulations to actual musical pieces? How do we combine them? Of course, there's not going to be one set of rules that just count for everything, but I would say you can actually mark some basic rules and then have a lot of exceptions. So let's have a look at those. So as a starting point, I would rather call it a starting point than like a fixed rule. And from there on, you can see what works and what doesn't work when you're actually working on a musical piece. So in this very basic, very rough rule, the T, we're going to use it for repeated notes and for jumps. So jumps can be from a third on, from a fourth on. The third is like a little bit in the middle sometimes. So repeated notes, 
So here you notice that if you actually wouldn't articulate the T, you wouldn't really distinguish very well like how many notes there are. Mm, it's not completely clear, right? Whereas with a T it is. And jumps would be, for example, So that's not always the case, but let's say as a, as a general rough rule, okay? Then the D is going to be in general for scale-like movement, so second. So if you combine it, you could have... So there, at the end, you've got the third, and it's not completely clear what you should, should do with that, right? Hmm. Now, when I say T, this is not going to work for the low note, because as soon as you say a T there, it's going to jump up to the second register. So that's where we will have to use the dud. It's a little bit softer, but it still separates the notes. There you go. You've also noticed in this example that I'm not saying the T always on the strong beat. I find that when you've got a run, it makes more sense if the last note is included in that run. Rather than, I don't know, it feels for me more logical to say da 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 than da 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 da. In early music, there is one big exception to this, and that's French Baroque music. So, French Baroque music plays with the concept of inégalité which means inequality. So let's say that they play with the idea that normally notes are not going to sound equal, so that gives a kind of elegance or sensuality to the music. And on wind instruments, this is translated into tu, tu, ru, tu, ru, tu, ru, tu, ru. It's not the normal grouping of two by two on the beat, but it's around the beat. So instead of doing Turu, 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 turu. In French music, it's going to be tu, turu, 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 turu. Tu, turu, 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 turu. So you notice it gets a little bit dancey like, small swing. It should be very little and only a suggestion. We shouldn't try to play the rhythm unequal but rather just play tu tu ru tu ru tu ru and that already creates an illusion of inequality. And in French music that's actually for the movements in seconds, the skill-like movements. For jumps they also indicate tu. And I would actually say when you've got a dotted note with a fast note and a normal tu, tu ru, I would use that. Tu, tu ru, tu ru, tu ru. The swing rhythm. In, in swing we would do it. Tu ru, tu ru. But even in more dotted. Because it makes much more sense to do to do, to do, to do, which is easier than do to, do to, do to, do to. Actually, Kvans describes this use of TD in 1752 in his treatise Versuch, eine Anweisung die Flöte traversiert zu spielen. So let's have a look. TD is indispensable for notes with point, for it expresses the dotted notes much more sharply and more vividly than any other way of using the tongue. With this little word tiri, the accent falls on the last syllable. The ti is short and the ri is long. The ri must therefore always be used for the note on the strong beat, but the ti for the note on the weak beat. 
So what he really describes is tiri, tiri, tiri. So how to practice grouping? Well, for French music, you will have to write it in the score. But for all these tu -ru -ru -ru, tu -ru -tu -ru, tu -tu -ru -ru -ru, um, apart from writing it in the score, there is actually a book of studies for this, and it's called The Complete Articulator by Case Buke. And in it, he has two parts. So he has a part in movements of three groups, and then he has the second part in movements of four groups each. The first part is more chromatic. So the first exercise is all da 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 da. And then he starts with one T and three Ds. Da 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 da. Try at the end da 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 to really block off that air with this still active. Da 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 da. But of course without stopping. Da 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 da. So that's something you have to practice. The beautiful thing is that then he shifts it. So then you get da 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 da, where a D is on the strong beat and a T isn't. And that goes on. And you can do it in all kinds of tonalities, by the way. And then he does groups of two T's and two D's. So that's going to be da 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 da. Etc. etc. And then in the end it's all T. And just like the other two topics, this episode also has its own PDF on my website with all the information and a bonus. On the third page, I describe the steps to follow when starting with double articulation. By now, you will probably know how to get there. In lapke.world, you go to Documents, which can be found in the menu in the upper right corner or by going down on the home page. There you will find the PDF about articulation as well as my other writings and musical scores. So please subscribe to the email list if you wish to receive news and updates. Okay, and I think with this we've come to the end of this video. So I hope you liked it again. If you did, please give it a like and follow me here on YouTube as always. Um, and see you in the next episode. Then I'm going to talk about coordination. So we're going to combine all these three. Make sure you've seen the other videos before. Bye! Thank <laughs> you.